Hello and welcome to the Chaplaincy Institute. I am Katrina Leathers and this is the primer class for the Arts for Awakening part of the curriculum. So if that's why you're here, you're in the right place. So I am the core faculty person overseeing the Arts for Awakening thread throughout the curriculum. My history is I was ordained at the Chaplaincy Institute in 2012 and after that I did the spiritual direction certification program so I'm familiar with all of that although it's changed a bit but you will be seeing me in quite a few classes as well as doing some outside work outside of class time possibly also so I am available whenever anything comes up throughout your time at Chi especially in relation to the Arts for Awakening classwork that's my focus so this class today this video is going to cover a few components, all of which relate to expressive therapies throughout the curriculum, as well as um, this primer class content. So the components for the primer class are the readings that you may have already done. They're listed on the syllabus, which is on the student hub. You should have seen that. You might want to, you definitely, well, you want to have that because the homework assignment is also in the syllabus. So there's readings in the syllabus, there's this video, there's the homework, which is the creative self-assessment writing. That gets turned into me. Once that gets done, then we will have a group video discussion for all the students who are coming into Chi in this time frame, hopefully before your first module. That's when we want to have all of the primer class completed because it does give you the groundwork you need for the classes, theoretical and philosophical approach, how we're working with expressive therapies here at the Chaplaincy Institute. So it's all really good information to have beforehand. So there's a handout posted on the student hub that is the uh, class handout, which would be paper if we were in a classroom, but you might want to print that out and have it with you. Um, it, most of what I'm going to talk about is actually written out in the handout, so you don't have to take notes per se. Um, and there's also some material on that handout that is not going to be part of my lecture, just a little bit. Um, so you want to at least look at that and see if you want to keep a copy of it. If you have any questions or comments, during this lecture or during any of the process of the primer class, please write them down and bring them to the final group discussion component of the class because the purpose of that discussion time is for us to address any questions you have. Since we're not in a classroom, this is a, a new format for this class. An important piece of that is to give you room to ask whatever might be coming up as you listen to what I say and do the homework material and contemplate this aspect of the curriculum. So please do write down any questions or comments you have. Um, so in this lecture, in this video, I will hopefully cover these areas. I will give you an overview of the curriculum and the objectives for Arts for Awakening at CHI, at the Chaplaincy Institute. I will give you an introduction to expressive therapies in general, what the pieces of that are, what the philosophy is behind it, and why we integrate that into the curriculum at Chi. Why is it part of what we're doing in teaching ministry? So the philosophical and theoretical underpinnings of expressive therapies, how it works, what it is, um, how to think about it. Then we will touch on the topic of applications um, and the guidelines for the use of expressive therapies both within ministry and across all contexts. And lastly, we will look at the themes that are common to the creative process and spiritual practice because the two are very intertwined. So the curriculum. Our, I'll start with the objectives. Our objectives for doing this work with you in your time at Chi, these are the things that we hope that each one of you will gain, that you will walk away from your time at Chi with these things. You will have, that each student will 
understand how I'm going to read these to you because I will not say them right. So I'm reading them from a piece of paper now. Um, so each student understands how engaging in the arts can be communion with the divine and recognizes the presence of the arts throughout faith traditions in history. There's a rich history of arts in all faith traditions. So although we won't be talking specifically about the history of that, we want you to have that in mind and you, you'll get pieces of it. So we hope that each student engages with the personal, in fact, it would be impossible for you to avoid this, engages with the personal and spiritual growth inherent in artistic and creative processes that you each one comprehends and appreciates the parallel nature of creative practice and spiritual practice. Each student identifies their own creative channels and unique artistic gifts and envisions how those gifts can be used in their own ministry. Each student has familiarity with the many modes of creative expression that can be used as connective, healing, and prophetic tools, and also has the capacity to invite others to express their own creative gifts as that facilitates the healing of self, of community, and the planet. And lastly, our objectives. We hope that each student understands spirituality, creative expression, and healing transformative practices as interconnected aspects of a holistic embodied well-being, like points of one star. So those are our objectives. So how do we do that? The pieces of the curriculum, we have about 10 to 12 classes, depending on which ones you count, but 10 to 12 classes that are part of the Art for Awakening thread throughout your modules. Um, most of them are highly experiential and have some sampling of different modalities, different arts practices, so that you're learning experientially, not just theoretic theoretically. Every class, well, some of the classes may not have as much of this, but most of the classes have readings that really do matter. Um, they are the foundation of the work that happens in classes. Um, in my classes, at least, they're not repetitive. The work that I do in class will not, is basically, it's based upon the readings and the content that you would get in the readings. So giving so doing the readings gives you the foundation that you need in order to understand a little better what we do in the classes. So the readings before classes do really do matter. Um, and a third component of the curriculum is the portfolio. Each student is going to create a portfolio over the course of their time at Chi. The portfolio is work that's done before and after each module. There is a document on the student hub that's the portfolio assignments all listed out with a checklist. And there's some homework before a specific module that you're taking. And then sometimes there's a writing assignment that comes after the module. All the details of that are on the portfolio document. Um, it's a combination of creative assignments and writing assignments, but all of it is in the genre of creative, personal, and expressive work. It's not theoretical, it's not academic in the expository sense. It's work that you do in your own creative and personal growth process. And the portfolio is a place that documents that process for you that you've gone through in your time at Chi. At the very end of that, you have a choice of whatever form of creative presentation you'd like to create to then offer to the class the module in your last <clears throat> in your last module so throughout the portfolio you have a lot of freedom of choice of what art forms you're engaging and how you are filling the assignments so um, it's a lot of creative exploration so 
Let's see, the first portfolio assignment is your creative self-assessment, which is the last piece of this classwork. So there's some overlap in how these things get done. Um, the purpose of the portfolio, as I've pretty much mentioned, it's to explore the question of how creativity lives in your life, what it is to you, and how you might like to expand that. Um, it's also to push you to explore areas that you haven't explored before, potentially explore things that you might think are not within your repertoire, that are things you might not think you want to do. Oftentimes when we explore, we discover things that we didn't know about ourselves and whole new territories open up. So we're offering you the opportunity to explore and discover new things. It is a growth process in your time here at Chi, and the portfolio was a way to do that in the creative creative arena. Um, there's a quote, which I think I'll get to later, that addresses that too. So the focus areas of the curriculum. There's three ways that we work in Arts for Awakening at Chi. There's the theoretical approach where we give you information that might be some case studies. It's most of the readings that you're given are theoretical. Um, they give you the underpinning for why and how the arts modalities are useful. So that's the theoretical aspect. And in the classes, there's a, a piece of that too. Um, the personal growth and awareness part is the other piece that happens in the portfolio as well as in your class time. And that also connects to your own spiritual practice. That's the piece, of course, that we're going to be exploring is how creativity and spirituality are interconnected. And so that's part of your own personal exploration process. And the last piece is about the practical applications of expressive therapies to your ministry. The way this works is expressive therapies is a wide range of, of tools and ways of working and approaches that can be applied in multiple ways. Um, all that we can give you, the best we can do, is to give you an introduction to the, the whole arena and to give you a sampling of different different ways of working and you start to accumulate a toolbox. That's the metaphor that operates in my mind for what we can give you is we offer the toolbox and you put in there whatever you think might potentially help you at some point in your work and most important might be that you gain the, the incentive and the curiosity and the courage to explore how creativity can be part of your ministry and how creativity can be part of your life and your practice and everything that you do, basically. Um, but how it's applied to your work is a lot going to be your own construction, taking something that you've read, something you've done in a classroom, and bringing it into a context and imagining how you can use it. We aren't able to to detail every possible context and every application, but that's part of what we offer you is the ability to do that. So the contexts that we do explore um, here are your own spiritual practice and your own psychological, emotional work and how the arts can be useful in that. And also that then translates to individual care. If you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody in a whatever context it might be, a lot of what you do in your time at Chi will be applied, applicable to work directly with individuals that you might do in your work in the future. And also group work, because a lot of what we do in classes is interactive within a group context. So that that is something you might take into any kind of group that you're doing or leading um, in your ministry work, whatever that might be. So what we don't really cover, which is certainly um, an open arena for possibility, is specific 
const uh, uh, contexts that are institutional, like we do, we will have a panel where we address um, arts and healthcare, but there's so many settings, such as a hospital, residential centers, prisons, congregational work, all of which um, we aren't specifically addressing very often, or maybe at all, but they're equally potent arenas for this kind of work. So that's the overview of the curriculum as we cover it in our class time. So now let's look at expressive therapies and what it actually is. So first of all, terminology, some of which I've already been using, um, realizing that you don't exactly know what the terms mean. Um, so expressive therapies I could also use the terms expressive arts, creative arts therapies, creative arts, although creative arts isn't necessarily the therapeutic approach, but all of these things are meaning the same thing of using the arts as a therapeutic modality, using creativity for healing in some way. Modality, most often when that word is used as I use it, usually means one art form, one medium, through which you are doing the creative arts work. Um, it's the creative form that's being used. For example, you might be doing drawing, so your modality is drawing. It's, it's a classic art therapy form. Um, or you might be doing some acting out, some drama, so the modality is psychodrama or drama. So Another thing, um, I just want to acknowledge, this is a detail, but it isn't. It's actually extremely huge. In this work, we draw this distinction between what is psychological and what is spiritual. In this work, there is a, an interweaving of those things that in the work we're doing throughout the curriculum, it's personal and it's spiritual. It's your growth in all of that arena of the psyche. So just to acknowledge that, the personal is always a part of this work and with our clients, and we can call it spiritual, but it also has the emotional component of psychological. So, and we're talking about spiritual care throughout the curriculum, and just to define what that means from my perspective in the Arts for Awakening thread, we're talking about the bonds between people and between oneself and spirit, between oneself and community, between different parts of yourself. So strengthening the bonds and the relationships, the connections is one piece of spiritual care. Um, another very strong one, which is part of what I just said, but it's, it's bigger than what I just said, is evoking the presence and awareness of spirit at any given moment in a context that we're working or in the process we're doing with ourselves in a creative process. So bringing in the presence of spirit is a piece of the spiritual care work that we're talking about in Arts for Awakening. And another one, which is again overlapping with all of this, is Tending to the needs of people when we're working directly with another person, the needs of people that are commonly thought of as existential in the sense of what's their sense of meaning? What's their sense of place in the world? What, how do they connect to what their, what their purpose is and what their sense of their own deepest truth is? That's part of the work we're doing in Arts for Awakening because those are the tools that are so effective in that kind of work, whether you call it existential or spiritual. So that's how I think about spiritual care as we approach it in the Arts for Awakening classes. So what actually is expressive arts therapy? Um, here's a bunch of things which don't directly answer it. It's like a montage answer. So again, I'm gonna read this because it's kind of, um, jumping all over the place. Expressive arts therapy. It's not an attempt to create great artwork or any art at all, actually. 
but its expression, connection, and communion. Thomas Merton actually says, art is not an end in itself. It introduces the soul into a higher spiritual order, which it expresses and in some sense explains. And I love that quote because that so much explains what expressive therapies is, especially as we're doing it here. Um, it's another set of languages, other channels for expressing and for listening. Expressive therapy is trusting the process, surrendering to what emerges. It's making connections between self and other, self and a group, self and spirit, and between parts of the self, including the personal unconscious, the soul, or the spirit. It is a discovery of emotional truth. Creativity can express unconscious material and can be an, therefore an integration of the psyche. It's also a practice of mindfulness and presence, responding to one's immediate experience, feelings, and perceptions. It can be an encounter with mystery, embracing chaos, the unknown, letting go, releasing your desire to control and to know what's going to happen. Expressive therapies is body-based, out of your mind. It's metacognitive. It's bypassing the analytic, ego-based approach of the mind to access the deeper knowing from higher self, from soul or spirit, or God, whatever term you use. Arts is one way to connect to that. Expressive arts is soul or spirit arising to speak through whatever is created, through the product, its spirit taking form. Expressive arts is sacred play. So, more technically speaking, expressive therapies is the use of creative forms of expression as a way of connecting healing, and providing therapeutic tools. Art as an expression in service of a higher goal. So why we do expressive therapies here at Chi? How exactly does it relate to spiritual care? If it hasn't already been clarified through what I've said, um, because creativity is the key link, the connector between self and other, between self and a group, between pieces of oneself, and maybe most at core, the connector between oneself and something beyond oneself. Spirit, soul, the greater good, the divine that surrounds us all. Engaging in creative processes further opens our awareness of psychic and spiritual levels of our existence and brings us deeper and deeper into presence. Engaging in creativity is entering the realm of mystery and uncertainty, giving form to chaos and finding truth in the process. These also are the core elements in spirituality and healing. Creativity is opening to spirit and giving it voice, giving it form. That's why we do it. That's what we do when we're here. So, if you would, if you're willing, just to, I wanted to bring a little piece of an experiential creative process into this kind of cut and dried lecture format, which is not the way I like to teach most. So we're going to have a brief creative visualization if you're willing to do it. Close your eyes and get comfortable. And I'm going to talk you through a brief visualization. This is one of the tools of expressive therapies, creating an imagery exercise where you talk somebody through a, cre a process and let them add in some pieces and bring something back from the visualization. So 
close your eyes wherever you are let your mind leave your surroundings and focus inward be aware of your body feel into your physical self and feel your breath going in and going out of your lungs breathe in breathe out and let your awareness drop into your body bring your consciousness deeper inside traveling inward to the imaginal realm where your mind creates everything that exists and imagine entering another world a place a place of beauty and light and start to look around what do you see what do you notice what does it look like in this place How does it feel being here? And what do you find as you wander through? Let yourself explore a little bit more. As you move around, you start to see something, someone approaching you. They're coming closer. What can you see about them? Who is it? What do they look like? Maybe they speak to you or maybe they don't. Maybe you know them and maybe you don't. But let them come close because they are bringing you a gift. They are bringing you something that you need or something that will benefit you in your life and in your work maybe. Let them give you this thing. If you have it, if you've received it, what is this thing that they gave you? Is it something you can see? Is it something you can hold? What do you know about it? Whatever it may be that you were given, trust that this gift is indeed what you need whether you understand that now or not. Give gratitude to that being that brought you this gift. Listen or ask if there's anything that you, either one of you, need to say to each other. And take a moment to do that, if there is. If you're ready, Return from that place, return from that world, come the, through the same path that you went to get there. And once you're back, open your eyes. If you'd like to take a moment 
and turn the video off to do some writing or draw whatever you want to make a record of what you just experienced if you'd like to, to, to turn the video off and come back when you're done. Okay, ready to continue? Let's get back to expressive therapies. So a very brief history, just because it could be useful. Um, expressive therapies evolved out of transpersonal psychology. So in the time when psychology was looking into moving beyond the personal into the broader realms of consciousness and experience, bringing the spiritual into psychology, that's when expressive therapies appeared. It came out of the work most specifically of Carl Jung because it was based on his concept of active imagination. That was his theory, his, his terminology, and he used it a lot with dream work. And expressive therapies took that concept and expanded it into the whole field of creativity. Um, so it's based on that. So the source of expressive therapies is coming from that time when, when the personal, psychological, and spiritual were really being combined in transpersonal psychology, and then that brought the creativity in. So expressive therapies came out of the union of those things, those three points of mind, spirit, and creativity. So that's the foundation. Active, uh, active imagination is a, a set of techniques or an approach, a mindset, which aims to amplify, to understand, and to integrate the contents of dreams and creative works of art. So it's an approach to working with arts. And that's what distinguishes it from art, because in artwork, it, it's, I won't get into that, but it's a different approach if you're doing art for art's sake as opposed to doing art for the sake of active imagination and healing and exploration of the psyche. So when we're doing active imagination, you are allowing creative forms to emerge while you exert as little influence as possible on them. You're not trying to create something out of your mind, you're letting the creative impulse guide what is creative. It's not ego work. It's not coming from your ego consciousness. So it's not your usual mode of working in the world. It's not your usual mode of consciousness. It's an altered state of consciousness in a way. So part of that can be um, verbal processing. Classically, um, a verbal processing component can help someone to understand a little more deeply what they've done in the creative process. Um, this is distinct from, different from interpretation. Interpretation is something that can be part of art therapies, most classically. Um, there's a whole field of traditional art therapy which takes a drawing and interprets it. It's a diagnostic tool. It's a way of trying to understand, um, usually trying to understand, um, you know, emotional dysfunction or, or what diagno diagnosis would be appropriate. That is not what we do. Um, interpretation, typically, um, from the perspective of expressive therapies, typically interpretation is a way of narrowing the creative expression, pinning it down to something we can understand and categorize. And many people will write about, and you'll do some reading along the way, that many people write that this actually is a, is a very deep disservice to the creative process, to our psyches. Um, People who do dream interpretation uh, will talk about how there are many interpretations for dream. There's not one interpretation. There's many ways to understand it. There's many ways to experience, experience it. And artwork is similar in that way that our goal is to experience 
the artwork, both in the process of making it and in how we relate to it afterwards, or in terms of how we relate to someone else's creative production, creative process, um, both as witness and creator, interpretation isn't the intention. And there will definitely be work along the way in the classes about how do we witness the creativity in ourselves and in others that helps to amplify, that helps to give us a deeper understanding of where that is coming from, but not reducing it to a simplistic interpretation. That is not the amplification. That's not honoring the mystery and the power that's inherent in these creations. Many people talk about a work of art as having a spirit. Sean McNiff talks about that, that a work of art has its own being, its own, it's an entity in and of itself. And when we try to interpret it, it's like trying to label a person and pinpoint it into one set of labels for a personality. And we all know none of us are that simple. And it's the same thing for creative production, that it's a, it's a multivalent, is that the term I want? It's a multifaceted thing that that we want to experience all the different ways this thing may exist to deeper understand what it's bringing to share with us, what it's trying to convey. Many people will do work all along the way to explore that point, but that's a really important point about what expressive therapies is and how we're working with it here at Chi. Um, earlier I said that art is giving voice to spirit or giving voice to our personal unconscious and none of those is a simple statement. There's nothing simple to interpret about what spirit may have to say to us or what our own unconscious may have to convey. So that was my, my rant about um, why interpreting isn't what we're doing here, um, which doesn't mean that we don't want to understand because the purpose of doing these things is communication and connection and understanding. But um, it's understanding in a very non-linear way. So, back to my notes, expressive therapies can be focused on one modality, one art form, like you may have a process where you're doing drama and you're doing drama therapy or dream theater or theater of the oppressed and you're using drama. Of course, drama includes all kinds of things. So another example would be um, uh, art therapy, visual art therapy, where you might be doing painting. And so the modality primarily is a visual art, painting. Um, intermodal expressive arts is when you go between modalities, intermodal. And that may mean that you do a painting and then you make a movement that expresses something in the painting, or you take a, a figure in the painting and you start to give it a voice and act it out, um, or do writing based on something that's in the painting. Those are examples of intermodal expressive therapies work. And a lot of what we do here is intermodal. Um, I'm gonna pause for a moment, take a drink of water just to The classwork here usually involves more than one modality. When you move between modalities, it can be a way of understanding and expanding the material more deeply. Um, there's a phrase that you don't necessarily need to remember that's called intermodal transfer. Uh, it's an expressive therapies uh, technical term, meaning that when you move from one creative modality into another, and that can be anything, you know, moving from making a sound to taking a shape to express the sound or doing a drawing and then doing a free write to express something in the drawing. When you transfer from one modal, from one modality to another, it changes and it expands the experience. And that's part of the inherent therapeutic quality of expressive therapies. It's also part of what makes it such a powerful connector, such a powerful tool to use for communication 
between all the entities that exist. So, um, the training in Arts for Awakening at Chi is very introductory in terms of expressive therapies. Um, it's not training you to be an expressive arts therapist, but what we're hoping that it does is that it leaves you with a good range of awareness of all the different tools and the intermodal way of working with them so that you can then bring that into all of your places later on. So I'm going to give you a quick list of the different modalities that you probably will encounter at some point in your time in the, in the modules at Qi. Um, it might even just be a taste and there might be some of these that aren't happening if the content of classes changes because it does sometimes but this is an overview. Painting and drawing. Um, images on cards, working with pre-printed images. Guided uh, spoken imagery like we just did briefly in this video. Collage work, you definitely will be doing that. It's a very great modality, very accessible. Um, clay, I'm hoping you have some time doing working with clay with your hands. Sand tray found art where you're using objects and creating scenes out of them. Storytelling, whether written or spoken. Creative writing, there's a lot of creative writing because creative writing, whether it's in a morning pages, which is a Julia Cameron practice, or free writing, just letting yourself write um, poetry. Creative writing happens in a lot of ways. Soul songs, using your voice, authentic voice, using your voice to create and improvise. And that might include some percussion instruments at some point. Um, improvised body tales as a form of storytelling. Body tales is a specific form that um, I'll mention later. Um, psychodrama and theater, that happens in a variety of different ways. Um, and it definitely will be included in a couple different classes. Dream work, hopefully with painting, writing, dialogue, drama, movement. That all can be part of dream work. You'll get a bit of that for sure in one class. Body sculpture, just using a shape or movement. Authentic movement, which is a particular form of moving from an inner source. We, I will have a class in August where you do that. That's part of the August class. Um, there also can, there will also will just be brief or longer expressive movements, just using movement to check in even. That's an expressive movement that you might find. Sacred dance. I don't think we're actually going to get into much of that. Unfortunately, we, you might uh, get that in one of the Saturday monthly services. Um, we've done that. Um, but sacred dance, is one modality. Music making, improvising music with instruments. Kirtan is, a, you have a whole class in Kirtan that's a beautiful form of using voice as an expressive spiritual practice. Creating an altar and creating a ritual. That's sort of not expressive therapies per se, but it's, it's all connected. And then performance art which you may choose to do as part of a sermon. I don't know how that falls in your sermon checklist required forms, but it certainly is a form that works. I did it in one of my sermons at Chi. Um, and you might also do that in your final presentation in your last module for your final assignment for the portfolio. So a performance art involving any art modalities you want. That is a wonderful, powerful form of expressive therapies. So all of what I just said, um, I have no doubt that as you listen to that, some of you may have had moments of saying, oh no, oh my God, I can't do that. That's terrible. What, what, I don't want to do this. What have I gotten into? Um, this is likely to push against your edges at some point and the creative process and spiritual practice does that. And that is part of why we have built the portfolio and these classes into the curriculum here, because 
it expands us. We grow when we do these creative things, when we do these uh, explorations into forms we thought we did not ever want to do, we discover parts of ourselves that we didn't know. I, for example, me, I entered a therapy program in expressive therapies thinking that I wanted to do poetry therapy. I, that was my intention. That was my goal. In the very first two weeks of the coursework, I was introduced to authentic movement, which is something I wouldn't have thought I wanted to do. I found that I loved the form. And ever since then, I've been very, a very serious practitioner and teacher of that form because I love it and it's powerful. Um, so you might have discoveries, things that scare you that you discover you actually love. Um, and the thing to remember is that none of this is done for the purpose of creating something beautiful to be critiqued or presented as a work of art. This is all expression. It's all growth work. It's therapeutic. It's healing. It's spiritual process. And that's how we do the creative components of Qi. So there's a quote, uh, Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote Conversations with God. I love this quote, and this is part, uh, this is core to what we do here at Qi. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that um, in your time at Qi, anytime you have something you need to discuss with anybody, but certainly with me, a phone call or an email, it's all you need to do. So um, a couple other points. Um, expressive therapies has some scales, as I call them. It can take different forms at different times. One of the scales is sort of a directive or directed to a non-directed process, meaning some of the things we do are very um, directed that you will be asked to do something like do a collage on your concept of God. That's a very directed process. And then others are very non-directed. For example, authentic movement saying, close your eyes and move however your body wants to move. So that's a scale of the directed to the non-directed process and everything you do will fall somewhere there. And another similar scale is the generative to responsive processes. The generative is when you create something out of nothing. For example, a movement that you just make up or you do a drawing that just expresses something that you feel right now. You're just generating it yourself. As opposed to a responsive process where you look at an image and you experience it and you write about or talk about what it brings up for you and how you would give voice to that or you do something in response to something. So we play with both of those sides of the scale also. And just to acknowledge that some things are going to feel more comfortable for some people because some people might prefer things that are more directed and more responsive because there's not as much freedom and it's therefore maybe not as frightening because there's it's it's not completely wide open it's a little safer and other people will feel more constricted in those those uh on that end of the scale they want things that are more non-directed or more generative where it's wide open what they produce and what they create and what they express and so that's something to keep in mind throughout your work in your coursework and just to notice what you're comfortable with and also whenever you do bring this to do with any work with anybody else just to keep in mind that different forms have different levels of comfort based on how directive they are how much they're responsive versus generative so just that's something to point out about expressive therapies one of the technical pieces um, Okay, one more um, philosophical point. Expressive therapies 
traditionally was created as a tool for psychological and cognitive understanding um, with a focus on analysis or verbal processing in order to deeper understand and integrate into the mind what was expressed, um, which is different than the interpretation. It, it's sort of a fine line, just to acknowledge that, but a verbal processing can make something be clearer to somebody that's a really valuable process. And another philosophical orientation in expressive therapies is that doing the creative process itself, making a drawing, doing a movement, letting yourself vocalize, however you're doing that, whatever the creative process is, that in and of itself is the healing tool. Is That's where the power lies. That is what brings what needs to be gained. Both of those things are true. The sharing, verbally talking or writing something down can definitely bring a deeper understanding and very often just the process of the creating of something is all that needs to be done. So just to hold the awareness that both of those are important. Neither one is more essential although there may be a time when one of them is called for more than the other. There may be a time that somebody does some movement and you've witnessed this and there's nothing that needs to be said. There's nothing that needs to take away from the power of that creative expression and that just witnessing it and having it experienced is enough. And there are other times where that verbal piece is needed to bring more closure or understanding. And I'm talking generally because, of course, it's wide open how and when these things will manifest. But to keep in mind that the verbal processing is sometimes useful and not always needed. So, so the next piece in this discussion is about applications. Um, one of the things that has come up in classes certainly at times is when people go through the process in class of an expressive therapies experiential component and then the question is but how am I ever going to use this and to acknowledge two things one of which is half of the purpose of the arts for awakening curriculum is your own creative process as a self-awareness and a spiritual tool as a practice. But the other piece about applications is um, how you will ever use it, as I've said before, is going to depend on how you develop the creative aspect of your own ministry. Um, it was originally created for psychotherapy and clearly in a one-on-one -on -one context if you're, whether you're doing spiritual direction or pastoral counseling or working one-on-one -on -one with patients in hospice, there are multiple ways <clears throat> that expressive therapies can be used in that context. Um, it can also be adapted for very different contexts. Um, and again, as I said a bit earlier, it so much is context dependent and so much depends on what your work is. Um, but you can bring the creative approach into education, into <clears throat> spiritual direction with groups or individuals, community building. There's so much in expressive therapies that's great for community building or working with particular issues within a community. Social activism, using artwork as a mode of <clears throat> social activism, and you'll get some of that, um, I believe, in one of the classes with Theater of the Oppressed. Any institution where you might offer groups working in prisons, working in, with cancer patients, working with people 
who are grieving, who are bereaved. All, the arts are so useful in those forms in so many ways. So again, the image of the toolbox that we are giving you a set of tools and they are really only introductory because you hopefully get a taste of all of the different possibilities and then anything that you're inspired by that you might want to use in your own work you will probably need to explore it further learn more read more and and there is reading in the um, in the uh, readings beyond the assigned readings there are recommended readings in the curriculum online that you can learn more and there are many classes both locally in the Bay Area but also if you're elsewhere you may find classes um, and it's in the handout a list of names that if you Google them you will find there are particular forms offered by either particular people or nationwide or worldwide organizations offering a particular form um, where you can learn more and then learning more gives you more tools for how to apply it to different contexts. So I've given you some examples of specific um, applications but I'll just mention a few more. Um, art projects with themes in any group setting that you're doing, doing a collage around a theme of bereavement or remembrance or anything uh, spiritual. You will in your portfolio have a lot of examples of things you can do in spiritual work with people. Um, um, I talked about this already. Yeah, so something I didn't mention, which is a great format to have, is an open art making studio. If you ever are working in a context where you can have a space, either temporarily or permanently, which is so sweet. Um, but working, I worked at Circle of Care, and we had um, an open house where for people who had lost lost loved ones or who had a parent with life threatening illness, and we had an opening an open studio space for people to come and just do creative processes, whatever they chose to do. Um, and we created a very safe, spiritually based environment where the artwork could just express whatever they needed to express. So that's a few examples. Um, another example that I love, I've mentioned Theater of the Oppressed and Theater of the Oppressed workshops in any environment in, in uh, I'm involved in the coming of age program um, at through the Unitarian group and Unitarian Church and UU Church and we have youth groups do theater of the oppressed as part of a social justice retreat um, so there's so many ways these things can be applied so it really depends on the context and your interest and you can explore and learn more and develop a creative aspect to your ministry so in your work both in the classes as well as um, as well as with any people you do express a therapy's work there's a very important set of guidelines which I'm going to read to you because they're very important and you will hear these again um, but actually I think what's most important is that if you make sure you keep a copy and make sure you really integrate these guidelines because it really helps to fully know how are we approaching expressive therapies as spiritual professionals and how are we approaching the use of creative processes here at Chi and with anybody we work with in this work. So these are the guidelines I'll read to you. Optional participation. Nobody's ever required to do anything and we do encourage people to try to push beyond their their um <clears throat> their hesitation to try something but not being required to do that the purpose is process not product it's not to make art so no critique <clears throat> and no critique to acknowledge also means be careful with praise because the presence of praise implies the possibility of critique. So 
if you give someone's painting a rave review, the person next to them might start to feel bad because their painting doesn't look as good, so to speak, as the one you're praising. So just to be aware of that. Um, have respect for the creation itself. It has its own integrity, its own message, its own voice. Re respect it and don't think that we can reduce and simplify what's been created. Being in the witness mode, holding a mindful presence to receive whatever shows up, that everything is welcome and we are there to notice, to really be open and notice. So a piece of that is to always be aware that your own response to any creation of another should be framed when you share it as just that, as your response. Because our response does not mean that we know something about what we are seeing or what we experienced. It's our experience. So sharing it as your experience. When I saw your painting, I felt this. Or when I watched you move, I was reminded of this. So that's a way of sharing when we do share that really respects that we don't understand what the creator was experiencing. So I already shared and talked about that interpretation is rarely useful. So instead of interpretation, we want to experience what the creation is. Expansion is valuable. Expansion, not interpretation. So another really important piece of this is to allow the silence and the void that is part of any creative process. Sometimes there's just a big stillness that might be part of what's being expressed. It might be what comes before. But just watch and wait and see what emerges, whether it's yourself or whether it's another that's doing the creating. So those are the basic guidelines. Um, they are printed <clears throat> in the handout, so you do want to make sure you are clear about those. Um, the last point I want to make, this is the last point of this lecture, is one of the things that I noticed in putting together this curriculum of Arts for Awakening at Chi was that the spiritual process and spiritual practice has a lot of commonality in themes, is the word I started using, with the creative process. So both creating and spiritual practice share common themes that that are addressed sometimes explicitly and sometimes not specifically in the modules but they are part of the portfolio work that <clears throat> these themes are a piece that you will be doing writing about after the classes where a theme is either explicitly explored or just part of what the work the creative work involves a particular theme went along with it pretty well so that assignment is after the class to write about that specific theme so you'll see that in the portfolio document but I just wanted to um, go over those themes just to give you a greater understanding of how the creative and the spiritual are overlapping as we see it so and also just to point out because this is a note I have here because all of this work, while we talk about it and we might be addressing it from what we call the spiritual point of view, um, all of this is completely applicable to working with people who are atheist or agnostic. Um, because these themes are themes in anyone's life regardless of whether they define them as spiritual or not. So that point just fit in right there. So the first theme has to do with connection and communion and how both in the spiritual process 
and what we do with that, with the divine, with community, with others, deepest parts of self, um, creativity does the same thing. It, creativity, in all of these things, these themes, are, creativity and spirituality, you're working with these themes. So that's the first one. Embodiment. This one actually is a little different because the theme of embodiment is that the creative process is a way of bringing form to the spiritual. It's a way of making tangible something that's not so tangible. So that's the way in which creativity and spirituality connect, not so much that it's a commonality. Um, but it is a theme that we do address because it's very important for us to think about how is this create how are our creative modalities bringing the spiritual into a more tangible realm that we then work with in that way. So listening is a clear theme. Listening in spiritual practice and listening in the creative process, central. And in our work as spiritual professionals, extremely important. And that an art form and a creative expression is another way of listening is a theme that runs through the modules also. Surrender, um, powerful theme in spiritual practice and something that is essential in the creative process. When we create, it doesn't come from our conscious, planned out ego mind. It comes from something else. It comes through us. It comes from beyond our conscious mind and we need to surrender. Our mind loves to be in control and loves to be in charge and we need to surrender that to let something come through, to let go, so something can emerge. So both in spiritual work and creative work, that's a central piece of the work. Trust. Just to acknowledge that's part of the surrender and part of all of this. The ability to trust, that's part of it. Improvisation. Um, improvisation is connected to the listening and to the trust, but improvisation means we never know what's going to happen. We never know what's coming at us in life, and the creative process is a way of practicing improvisation. It's a way of letting go of our planning, letting go of our concept of what's supposed to be, and responding in the moment from our present experience to whatever is happening. So that practice in improvisation is a large part of what creativity can give us. And it's a huge skill in life um, as a spiritual, a spiritual reality, a spiritual mindset. Um, so the last piece is um, on this list. Um, and uh, there are more, of course, but these, this is the set that we're going to be working with um, in this curriculum for sure. Being the witness um, in much of spiritual work um, with other people as well as in our own lives, a large part of the spiritual process is how do we be with that which is difficult and how do we just let it be? How do we be a witness rather than trying to change things or fix things, which so often we can't anyways. So we do practice that through the creative processes also. That when we let something emerge, and our role is to witness it, to be with it, to hold it as best we can, and to just witness it. So that's, that's a theme that um, we work with in August. So all of these, as I said, will be part of your portfolio assignments, specifically after classes. For you, you will have the assignment to explore what that theme means for you, how you experienced it in the class, and how, how it moves in your life. So, so that is the content for this 
class lecture. Like I said before, anything you have any questions about now or at any point, feel free to contact me. I am completely available for that process. Um, I am the one who receives all of your portfolio assignments, and I, so I am tracking your portfolio work, which is reflects your whole Arts for Awakening process in this curriculum. So I'll be part of that with you. Um, the next step for this class is once you have completed your creative self-assessment, we then will schedule that group discussion. So like I said before, bring any questions you have to that discussion and um, we'll have open time with just a few students, um, hopefully three to five students for each of those discussions. Um, hopefully all of that can be done before your first module. Um, we'll see. It could be the discussion would be afterwards, but like I said, I'm available anytime you have questions or concerns about any of this. Um, so that's it for now. That's the content. And um, look it all over. See how it sits with you. I look forward to reading your creative self-assessment and working with you throughout the process of your class time. I will be teaching uh, four or five classes beyond this one throughout the year, so I will be seeing you in those classes as well as in between um, in whatever way makes sense. So contact me for anything you need. Be well and blessings on your work for all your time here at Chi.